Stan Jabalisco here, <clears throat> proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations at your service. There was a little zapper there, <clears throat> indicative of the topic to be discussed now. And that topic is lightning. In 1971, my call letters were WA0OKV. I lived in Rochester, Minnesota, and my ham station comprised a Drake T4X receiver, a Johnson TR switch, which my dad drove me out to Waseca, Minnesota, about 40 miles away, to purchase right at the, right at the factory there, the E.F. Johnson Company. And the tuner, similarly, was an E.F. Johnson Viking Matchbox. We also had, somehow the feed line seems to have disappeared on me. Well, 50 ohm coax. You get the idea. So these things disappear and then you rewrite them and uh, then the parts of the old stuff reappear. But this was about a hundred feet of coaxial cable, 50 ohms, to a 20 meter vertical antenna which really didn't need the tuner. But I had the tuner there anyway in case I wanted to try and force feed that antenna on other bands, as I do today. WA0OKV in the summer of 1971, where I spent a great deal of my time between swim workouts at Soldier's Field Pool, an unheated swimming pool in Rochester, Minnesota. That unheated swimming pool, by the way, now, why does that thing stay there like that? This just baffles me. Anyway, I had a Drake T4X transmitter, the TR switch, and a keyer. It was an old Ico keyer made of, had it five vacuum tubes, I believe, in it. And I had the venerable old Vibroplex paddle to use with it. And these things all sat down in the fallout shelter in our house in Rochester, Minnesota. Our, meaning my parents. I was only 17 years old. But one day, while we were having our 11 o'clock workout at Soldier's Field unheated swimming pool, a thunderstorm approached and struck. And it had lightning of uh, the sort that you rarely see anywhere. Uh, well, you see it in Florida quite often in the lightning belt, but it struck all around and the workout had to be called off and I waited for a ride from my mother to bring me home. And we had... I actually saw a lightning bolt strike a flagpole on the other end of a football field uh, probably only about 150 yards away from me, this uh, lightning bolt struck that flagpole. Uh, didn't have any effect on the flagpole or the flag, but it startled me, I'll tell you that. Anyway, that thunderstorm seemed to continue uh, for the better part of the day. And my mother and I were upstairs and sitting in my parents' bedroom when some, suddenly there was a snap and a crackle and a pop, sort of like the motto that they used to use for a certain cereal. Maybe they still do. Uh, and um, it was Kellogg's Rice Krispies, except louder. And a, a bulb and a lamp, some smoke, a puff of smoke came out of that lamp, but the bulb stayed lit and the electricity stayed on. But obviously lightning had struck very close. It didn't strike my antenna directly or these pieces of equipment here would have essentially ceased to exist. But it did strike sufficiently close 
to create an electromagnetic pulse in this antenna right here sufficient to produce a current surge that fried the dielectric of this coax ruining it it had to be replaced fortunately I was not in the station at the time uh, because it, uh, the events that occurred there would have startled the daylights out of me something awful there was very little damage to this equipment though even though the current surge was sufficient to fry the coax and it caused a very small uh, little bead of metal to form on one of the tuning capacitors in this uh, transmatch apparently melted it must have arced in that capacitor and melted a little spot but it didn't affect the performance of the tuner none of this equipment was affected in the slightest but the fuse in the keyer blew and that was the only other damage that actually occurred to the equipment at WA0 Ocean Kilo Victor in 1971 during the summer thunderstorm in Minnesota but there was one other thing that happened and I discovered it when I went down to the fallout shelter to see if I still had a radio and that event was that the fuse box in that fallout shelter which contained just one fuse had been destroyed by a, an electromagnetic pulse induced current surge in the power line the same one that presumably did the Kellogg's Rice Krispies motto and that lamp in my parents bedroom but it had a little more dramatic effect not only did it blow the fuse but it destroyed the fuse box and the fuse exploded all over the entire room there were pieces of that fuse behind things that I was discovering six months later. That whole little box about the size of, oh, maybe a, a handy talkie, just a little thing. Um, that, little, that little box was completely destroyed and had to be replaced, but fortunately the wiring remained intact. But the, the the lightning obviously did not directly strike this antenna or there it would have burnt up the tuner and the feed line at the very least. But it did cause an electromagnetic pulse which produced a current surge in this feed line sufficient to fry the dielectric of the coax, sufficient to arc in the tuner, and it also arced on the contacts outside of the tuner finding its way to ground that way but did no damage and blew the fuse in my venerable old vacuum tube Ico Keyer. That was a wonderful looking little thing if you can look that up E-I-C-O and then Keyer and Google on that probably as separate words. It ought to, you ought to, you'll probably see it was it was a work of art and it still worked everything still worked I just replaced that fuse replace that feed line and uh, replace the fuse box and WA0 Ocean Kilo Victor was back on the air between vain attempts to become an Olympic caliber swimmer well <laughs> I don't know if I'm an Olympic calendar, uh, calendar, <laughs> Olympic caliber a lightning expert yet, but that's why I made the video and sent it to the ARRL headquarters concerning the protections that are in place against electromagnetic pulses at W1AW. I might make a couple of more videos which explain some obvious and simple measures that you can take to help protect your radio against lightning induced electromagnetic pulses. However, it probably won't work against more powerful pulses like that which would occur with a solar 
coronal mass ejection, one of which occurred in 1859, sufficient to set telegraph stations on fire. It's common. It's not a question of if, but a question of when. My station today is not hardened against this, and I doubt few Radio Ham's stations are. But maybe after this series of videos, if I can just save one Radio Ham a little bit of grief, a lot of grief, a destroyed rig, maybe I'll consider it having spent time well. W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations signing off for now. Saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon. And so long, or as the Ico Kier would say, did 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 <clears throat> try that again. Did 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 da did da.